Here we go again, me pulling out a chart like I'm some sort of respectable journalist, and I'm not paid enough to care. You might wonder how did we come up with fork, but with a little extra digging, like a journalist, which is not what I do, we may have some answers for you. Russell Owens is the president of G4 TV. She was hired in 2021, so last year, when this all started. Mama Russell, she's basically what Susan Wojcicki is to YouTube. So Mama Russell comes in and she oversees key business functions, including advertising, sales, programming, content, operations, marketing, finance, IT, human resources, and additionally, Mama Russell will manage the launch and growth in the day-to-day -day operations of the network through content licensing, programming, production, development, and content distribution and partnership agreements. To break down the corporate structure, it goes kind of like this. G4 isn't owned by NBC Universal. Mama Russell is the president and she runs G4. G4 is owned by Comcast Spectacor, or whatever the hell it's called. Comcast Spectacor is part of Comcast Corporations, a global company that operates Comcast and inspired by the technology and creativity of Comcast NBC Universal. This is all confusing and pointless in all honesty. But in the long and the short of it is, this lady, Mama Russell, she's Fork's boss. She's at the tippy top, the wine mom, trying to push how cool she is. Living NFTs of the futures, my dudes. She's hoping to sell these sort of things to people that are dumb enough to pay for it. Now, if you recall, there's a point where Fork was talking about how her boss has thanked her for her rant. Thank God Fork has defeated misogyny. Anyway, if anything, it had to be Mama Russell giving her the pat on the back. As I've stated before, G4 was resurrected from the dead husk to capitalize on the gaming gold rush that was brought about by coronavirus. Everyone was making hand over fist money. They were hoping to use this to also be the mouthpiece for their esports teams that I talked about in the last video. You can find it. G4 now needs to make space for its advertisers through multi-platform commitments. And Lord knows they have a lot of them. YouTube, Twitch, and the Comcast streaming service. I'm sure that's burning the world up. Articles say the rejuvenated G4 is led by Mama Russell, former executive of Warner Brothers Mattel. I think she was famous for uh, the... Barbie breaks up with Ken split in the early 2000s. You remember how groundbreaking that was? If anyone is equipped to open G4 to a more diverse audience, it's full stop, said Chelsea Delberg, a former associate producer of Attack of the Show, who worked under Mama Russell at Warner Brothers. She's no stranger to the gaming culture, to geek culture, and candidly, to the patriarchy that had permeated it previously oh my god it all makes sense now this explains why we have the g4 we have now that just reeks of diversity hires if you've seen the g4 D, D live stream it looks like a bag of retarded skittles the previous iteration of g4 was criticized for content that some described as sexist or objectifying what is the new g4 doing to avoid developing this kind of reputation Yes, especially when you think of the audience of gamers and fandom, there's a huge representation of women. Hopefully, we've moved away from people thinking that video games are something for guys to do. You know, I come from G4, both from my background in video games. I was in Electronic Arts. I was in Warner Brothers. And then Machinima. This is not a resume that screams to me winner. This basically reads as, I was involved in everything most gamers now loathe and despise. But for me, it's a personal passion. The fandom, I'm a cosplayer. I played a bunch of Wonder Woman characters. And so I kind of join in with a lot of women who really participate in the industry. But sadly, don't see themselves in leadership positions. Oh my god. I can't, dude. This is, it's like Strauss Zelnick if he had breasts. I'm really excited to hopefully bring more women and people of color and make both working at G4 and consuming it a great experience. Yes. Great. Do you see why we have what we have now? In this article, we learn that G4 has a plan to take over Twitch by giving everyone the greatest content they've never seen before. G4's answer to premium content, from sketches to off-site stunts and co-streaming esports tournaments with commentary from G4 talent. Have you seen G4 sketches? There's nothing funny going on here. There's nothing funny going on. The next category. 
Uh, sure. Um, okay. Mm. Excellence in audio design celebrates games <laughs> with the most outstanding and impactful sound effects. The nominees in this category are Forza Horizon 5, Woo! Hell Let Loose, Inscription, Woo! Resident Evil Village, and 12 Minutes. You, you know, guys, uh, Emily wasn't kidding. This is actually kind of kind of fun, you know? What do you mean, Gerard? Oh, I don't know. Like, you know. Myself. <laughs> Kill me, please. I want to die. I would take G4 sketches, and I swear to God, I would tie my ex-girlfriend to a chair, and I'd play them on loop. Just to show her how much I am angry with her. <laughs> you think this is funny, Kimmy? I'm so sorry. Turn off Kevin Pereira, please. We're doing a higher production value that relies on pre-recorded video content. Going outside and shooting people doing stunts. Yeah, that's working in good, ain't it? I can't say that. What we've come to expect in traditional television, we're bringing to production and that costs more, just plain and simple. So they basically have an outdated format, or I should say a format designed for television, and they think they're gonna take over Twitch with it, which hasn't really been going well. Christ almighty, screw it, it's gonna be a long video. The network is funding these bigger budget productions through the combination of advertising revenue and brand integrations to reconcile its high budget approach. With esports notoriously hard to monetize audience, Mama Russell explains that G4 is trying to rewrite how brands interact with gaming and esports programming. It gets better. Just stick with me here. The word that gets used a lot is authenticity, and I'm almost bored with the term because it means a lot of things. That's what I get when I watch G4 content, total authenticity. What we say is that the irreverent nature of G4 as a network means that brands cannot take themselves too seriously. We need to have the creative freedom to really make this feel like it's holistic to what we are doing and our tone and manner. I, I don't understand. Like there's nothing here that feels irreverent or witty, witty you know, or holistic. Everything seems like a corporation trying to capture lightning in the bottle and they can't seem to see it. On top of that, they hired a lot of talent not too many people know of or care for. It's actually asinine. Nothing personal, but these are bad decisions. It is crazy. We say to give a woman, woman power is like to give a gun to a monkey. <laughs> we have stopped doing that ever since the 1999 Astana Zoo massacre. Good for whoever's working in G4, get the bag, because I don't think this is going to stick around. And if it does, it's not going to be doing well. It'll be on life support. So, for instance, instead of just having Pizza Hut logos things on, we created a character. His name is Rip Blazer, a pizza man we think from the future, who appears in our programming and gives the audience an opportunity to get a QR code and potentially win free pizza. Really? Oh my god. Really? It says it. Oh my god. <laughs> Rip G4. It's a channel that's gonna die sooner than the CEO thinks. And it'll show up and try to sell you a crypto beefcake. <laughs> the CEO G4 did a very interesting technology partner thingy live stream where they talked about crap that it's really depressing and one thing she's definitely hell bent on is nfts and her approach to nfts are exactly how most gaming companies approach nfts they're now trying to package it under the idea that you can make money by playing games yeah the gaming industry wants to give us money back get the f Quack. out of here what i love is as they talk about the nfts that evolve over time and I know you get excited by that. I do, character. I do. I mean, here's an example. If you see on our, our uh, slide here, um, hopefully everybody also knows who Lionel Messi is. He's probably the world's most popular uh, soccer player. Um, this is uh, an example of, let's say you get your Lionel Messi. And again, they're using uh, what looks like a trading card because it's a very common you know, identifier in, right. in sports. But you get your Lionel card and it has a certain value. And let's say right now, if I bought this as an NFT, I could go and sell it for $100. Um, but let's say he plays a few games, 
scores many goals. The value of the card would literally, the, the card would visually change and the value would change. So if I was smart enough to hold on to my messy card, it could now be worth $400. If I choose to hang on to it and then he wins the World Cup, the value has gone up and it's all dependent by the market. We also move on to, it's two wine moms telling you about internet culture. We've come full circle at the end of the dark timeline. Generation G. I remember the last time a company talked to me about generations. The Spice Girls are doing little kicks and they are saying we're generation next while trying to sell me sugar water. Okay, we've all heard Gen Z, Gen Y, Gen X. What does it mean? Well, this is a new one for you. And I did some research on this. The Atari 2600, which was the first home gaming system. So remember, we all used to in the 70s and you know early 80s, everyone was playing in arcades. Well, this was the first home console system and it was really transformational and allowing people to play games, video games at home. Launched in 72. So let's just say we give it a few years to get immersed into people's houses. What that implies is that everyone after 1981 is a gamer, that in some way, shape or form, they were exposed to and playing games. And this is massive because what we have is 40 years, four decades of people who have been in immersive worlds. Wow, I bet after that talk about Generation G for gamers really got your juices going. You're feeling the vibes. This woman is touching you. She can market to you. You feel she understands the culture we're in. Well, guess what? She, Mama Russell, is ready to tell us about the next step in gaming. We're going to take the physical world and meld it with the digital world. And we got digital world? Really, Stu? I think, uh, folks, are you ready to put on your safety belts? No, you don't need anything. You don't need a helmet. We're, we're going to go into the digital world. And um, I'll tell you what this is. This is a live world, uh, meaning it is uh, accessible. Um, this is for our favorite client, Dell. The fact that this is supposed to be like this great presentation about how the digital world is the next step and this Dell technology is awesome. It's running at 12 goddamn FPS for Christ's sakes. Can we move on to the whole video now, Stu? If you don't like it, don't watch it. Peace. Most of you watching are going to go, what the f*** is that? That's what you deserve. This is who I am. After I finished my G4 video, I was off the net and back to being sh** in real life. The mark of a man. His misery is only ever truly over in death. But within an hour of my video going live, the comment section made me aware of Kevin Pereira's view botting back in 2018 and Fork being kicked out of Riot Gaming's commentary community or something like that. Apparently, she's very polarizing, which... You know, when you look at how things are now, that's not really surprising news. Gaming gets a really bad rap. It can be an incredible community, but it also can be one of the most vile, disgusting communities you've ever seen. And so everything is sexist. Everything is racist. Everything is homophobic. And you have to point it all out. At the time of Kevin Prewer's Twitch view botting, he had a few things to say. I explicitly said I had nothing left to lose and was very flippant about it and said, well, a way to get discovered on the platform is to have a channel that's getting more views, Pereira said. So instead of trying to make my content better or refocus my strategy, son of a bitch, <laughs> Pereira said, so instead of trying to make the content better or refocus my strategy, with the limited time we had left, I decided to shortcut it and try to get some extra views on the channel. Prayer acknowledged that view botting means the attack of the show brand is pretty much done. That he would be shutting down everything, including the team's Patreon. I tried to save jobs. I really did. And I hope that in the end, that I didn't do any irreparable damage to the people's careers. That happened. <laughs> Now, at the time that people had told me about Kevin Pereira's view botting, I didn't really think much of it. I was already punch drunk from the cringe and low on mescaline. So, it was off to my dealer, Kevin Nash's house. No, not the famous wrestler. You need more coke. It then hit me. 
The viewer discrepancy between Twitch and YouTube is actually staggering. I pointed it out briefly, but really look at it. Some videos, they were just miraculously getting like 500,000 viewers. And they had what, 300,000 followers on Twitch or something like that? It made no sense that there would be that many views. But I digress. The thumbnail looks like Patton Oswalt has transitioned into a woman while entering into a homosexual relationship with Andy Dick. So technically, I would click this thumbnail because that's the energy it's giving me. You know, these are lean times for Andy Dick, baby. Dark Sea Death Hill. In case anybody's watching. Because people do watch my cameos, by the way. You spell it if you guys are on Twitch, which I am, but they kicked me off. But then I went back on and they let me back on, which is weird. So I'm kind of like in limbo. But then on the YouTube page, it's like completely stagnant. In fact, almost dead. Anyone who's that popular on Twitch, the views usually carry over on YouTube as well. And don't forget, G4 has a brand deal with Twitch, so let that sink in as well. Twitch always takes care of its partners. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we come to the part of the program which is always my favorite because it means something. This video is sponsored by Galaxy Lamps because YouTube hates me. The Galaxy Lamp 2.0 fills your room with mesmerizing spotlights that mimic real stars. I recommend the blue version. Once the beam leaves the matrix and strikes your surface, you'll be immersed in an alternate universe of constellations. You're Captain Kirk now. There's an app for the projector that gives you more color options, custom themes, and adjustable rotation speeds, and the ability to set timers and schedules. If you don't like installing apps, which I can completely understand, there's a settings button that's still located on the side of the lamp itself, and it comes with six pre-installed settings. The Galaxy Lamp is perfect for any room, any setting, especially while watching films. It's safe for the whole family because it uses low wattage lasers that produce less heat, it's safe for kids, and it's pet friendly. By the way, it's a very unique gift that I strongly only recommend giving to chicks because they seem to love it. I don't think a normal dude would admit to owning this. Go to galaxylamps.ko slash it's a Gundam to save 15% off your order today. But should we be partnered with them? When we did our charity stream, Joey Salads came here and he, so he went down to the park across the street and Justin Roiland Pepper sprayed him in the face. For charity, of course. And we had to do it in a way because we weren't ready for it. That Joey live streamed it on his phone and then we watched it on the TV. Mm -hmm. So Twitch <laughs> suspended Joey's <laughs> Twitch account. Like immediately. But they didn't, they didn't do anything to us. And I later spoke on the phone to my contact there. And he said, and I quote, that we give special treatment to our, to our partners, to our big partners. Well, we take care of you. Oh, my. Well, I'm planting a whiskey tree to end all this misery. But after all that, I had no interest in making another video. I kind of wanted to be done and dusted with it. So, while I was out in the snowstorm, you know, just plowing away, thinking about how miserable I was and how I wish I was doing music, Ryan at the RK Outpost was like a dog with a bone. He was all over a fork like my mother's all over a piece of chocolate cake. Geeks and Gamers was in the mix too. It was like Starsky and Hutch. They were hunting down the well-known drug kingpin, <laughs> Muncher. Still, can we make that joke? Now the RK Outpost went hard on the whole viewbotting angle, which admittedly could be a possibility. Because who in the world would watch this? <laughs> Unironically. No, really, I'm serious. Who would watch this? You're gonna watch it, cause I had to watch it. You, you hear are that fee? Your fee? Yeah. Your reputation is growing. I've been act diligently spreading the rumors. No, truth, truth. <laughs> spreading the truth. Good for you. Yeah, you know, it was just another night. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. You uh, do that often? Well, excuse me? You do that often? Uh, you satisfy women to their <laughs> utmost uh, pleasure? Yes, we do that. <laughs> You do that off. I, I try. Oh. You try? <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Hi. Ollie. Huh. Sad. Very sad. Sad. It's you right here and now because I do not know how many people you have aboard the hyena. Fearsome vessel that it is would be a shame if something were to happen to it. 
<laughs> Your boss may be able to do something to me, but this ship, as you call it, can't do a damn thing to the hyena, nor can any other ship in these waters. But if it's a war you want, I'm sure the Xanathar would be th in the 80s when gay people look surprised all the time. Oh my God. I would use this footage to torture terrorist. <laughs> he's acting like he's enthralled in this shit. I am so bored. I want to strangle myself. Fr Frost is not there either. I'm annoyed with this. Frost looks like she gives less of a shit than I do. And she's getting paid for this. Calm down. So, as you can see, top tier stuff. Um, You're probably enthralled. You can't get enough. You're like, Gundam, please play me another clip and let it run for 12 hours straight. But we don't have time. Anyway, all the members of Geeks and Gamers have been banned. Oh, wow. Look at those views. Before they're getting 30K views for the D&D uh, &D night. Now it's 1,500. That's a pretty big drop off. I guess it's because... Somebody was talking about view botting and it just oddly drops at the same time. They also set up these YouTube live streams so that you cannot comment unless you've been a subscriber for longer than four weeks. It's the rotted skunk is over there just twisted in the corner. Ugh. So they're really cracking down on anyone coming in and, you know, telling you that Olivia Munn's feet are delicious. Because that needs to stop, you bigots. Oh, I forgot to mention in the last video that Olivia Munn was actually in talks and she was supposed to be on G4's TV's reboot, but all the negotiations fell through. I'm assuming that she couldn't secure the bag she wanted for it. Odds are Olivia Munn probably wanted more money than everyone in the set combined. And frankly, they probably should have paid her because now we have Fork. Oh well. Sucks to suck. <laughs> Didn't destroy the fan, it gently massaged it into submission. Fork was doing victory laps around Twitter like Rocky Balboa from Rocky 2. His game journalist and other clout chasers ran behind her cheering as loudly as possible. You defeated misogyny! Uh -huh. I'm so glad you said that because it needed to be said. It's not that we haven't heard it a hundred thousand times since 2016. My God. I was even tagged in one of the arguments under the timeline of Fork. The typical white knight showed up and dismissed my video as, and I quote, clickbait. The irony of this interaction was he accused a guy who linked my video of being biased. And he himself didn't bother to watch my video and just called it clickbait. Ah, you gotta love progressives. Fork touted that she had over 8,000 plus new followers and she was making fat stacks while G4 was losing subscribers. This Twitter timeline was no different. She literally repeated herself yet again with the same sort of victory tweet. By the way, she deleted her whole timeline so can't find anything. I looked at this and I decided to not bother replying. I am the king. I will punish you. Any man who must say I am the king is no true king. Gloating over such a small victory says a lot about a person's character. Maybe she was pissed that day. Who cares though, really? Flexing on random dudes who may post on Twitter and you're like, well, I got a lot of followers and I made a whole lot of money. Like, wow, cool. It all reminds me of something that Moliere once said to Guy de Maupassant in a cafe in Vienna. <laughs> That's nice. You should write it down. But I'm sure somewhere out there, Adam Sessler saw these string of tweets and he was clapping away like a seal performing tricks at SeaWorld, even days before this interaction came to play. She was fighting with people on Reddit. In a Reddit post titled, Nerd Culture is Toxic, I'm sorry, but if you find someone like Asmergold threatening, I worry about your ability to even handle the common cold. But all jokes aside, Fork had this to say. I work in gaming. I'm currently having multiple YouTubers send their followers after me on every platform. This one included because I did a three minute segment on sexism that 
asked the panel to rant about something that annoyed them in gaming within a two hour show. They believe I retaliated because I've been lying and spreading misinformation. Well, I'll say she wasn't lying. She was just ignorant. You can't really call it lying. She just didn't know. If anything, Fork probably doesn't know that much about gaming outside of things she's genuinely interested in. In that clip that I showed in the last video, not doing it again, you can check it out there. She didn't know what the hell she was talking about. And technically, you can't hold it against a woman that doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. And if you're a heterosexual man, you know what I'm talking about. It's just sometimes women can't admit they don't know something. <laughs> you know, it's just like they can't. It's like something in her DNA and it's wired that she cannot admit that she's wrong or doesn't know. And this isn't about Fork. This is just my personal life and experience that is like leaking into this video right now. It's like you don't know. So shut up. You don't know. You're talking out of your ass. And don't even give me these platitudes about manifestation and all this other crap. All right. I'm trying to. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. Anyway, Fork just did know. That was the problem. Let's, about exclusive releases, since I mistakenly said Hogwarts Legacy was an exclusive release, I think I actually asked, I think I actually asked if it was or bought it up. I can't quite remember. No, girl, you didn't do that. You could have easily watched your own video and checked yourself, but whatever. Maybe she didn't remember. You know, I take it back. She probably didn't. I don't remember what the hell I said even a day ago. Unless it's important. It's been an absolute Wah. shit show. And my DMs and emails look like an Xbox Live lobby. But the absolute disconnect of me calling out sexism and then being incredibly sexist to me is pretty funny. You know, she said that same thing on her Twitter account. My voice is drying out. There are a lot of bad faith actors who have galvanized nerd communities against marginalized voices and women in particular. There's a great book on the alt-right that details how Gamergate was the first practice run for the nebulous alt-right to display their harassment tactics. Our experience of these instances are left over from their efforts. There you go. Gamergate. Why didn't I see this coming? Everything is Gamergate. You got a hole in your underwear? Gamergate. You lost money in the stock market? Gamergate. One boob is like hanging lower than the other? Toxic masculinity and Gamergate did it to you ladies. I haven't seen a single YouTuber send a follower after her. And I've seen a lot of videos on G4 recently. Were there too many videos made? One can argue that's true. But the emphasis was overall that, let's face it, G4 didn't want a certain type of people. They were very antagonistic towards anyone that was a Trump supporter. Hell, Frost said it herself. If you're a Trump supporter, I don't want you as a fan. This, the, it's kind of amazing that she doesn't see that this galvanizes people. She doesn't see the things she said were toxic towards the gaming community. Frankly, all she had to do was shut up. You know, she could have did her like rant about gamers and then that was it. Never address it again. Don't fight with people. Don't keep the ball rolling. That's all she had to do. And people would have forgotten in a couple months. But frankly, doing it on G4 when most of the people who watch this show want to recapture some sort of nostalgia, not a good move. That Reddit post was just as disingenuous as Kathy Griffin running around and coming back after Biden is president and then sitting there and saying something ridiculous. Hey, techie, smarty, pants followers of mine. Do you think what happened with my Trump photo scandal being such an international overblown outrage could have been because of this Gamergate thing I'm learning about? No. Here's what it was. It wasn't funny. And I don't even like Trump. I couldn't care less about him. He's just not funny. That's what it was. You went out there. You hung your balls out. And people said, ew. <laughs> that was it. And you got roasted. It wasn't about gamer gate. You just suck. It's over, Kathy. It's not 1990 anymore. It's game over, baby cakes. Take your money. 
and go live on a beach somewhere. It's over. Now, nobody not finding her funny and interesting? Gamergate. Uh, we got it. Kathy Griffin's com comedy career is over? Gamergate. Women. Huh? There was a lot of Reddit drama with Fork, basically, like uh, she was uh, going on a tear, on a tangent, constantly fighting with people back and forth. It made absolutely no sense. Things got so bad that the forum got locked many times over. They even had moderators actually replying to constructive criticism by telling people who had this criticism that I 100% say was constructive, that they were coming from a place of privilege. Yeah. Being a male is privileged. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Women have periods once a month, but a man's life is a <laughs> never ending period. It's pain, strife, anxiety, constant bloating, misery. But then some butt nugget on the internet with a degree for writing that reviews video games poorly and demands an easy mode tells you you're privileged. The emails I get from men undergoing divorce that have to move back into family members' homes or have to live in cars, the first thought that comes to my mind certainly isn't male privilege when I read these. Dear Gundam, I'm writing you from my car. My wife and ch children are gone from me because she's divorcing me. And then he writes next, Thankfully, my male privilege has allowed me a can of soup. Anyway, anyone who disagreed or offered any level of dissent or constructive criticism was censored on the Reddit posts. Yes, some comments might have actually been trollish, but the vast majority were not. But in this day and age, the only time you can tell a cis woman she's privileged or she's off the mark and get away with it is if you're a trans woman. But here's a link from Lunar Archivist. You can see it yourself. Um, Just look at this. It's like actually crazy. The level of censorship. Everything red was moderated. Everything blue, the person deleted themselves. The only things you really actually see that stay up are messages that just tell Fork she's the greatest thing to ever happen. Everything else, gone. Someone makes a good point. Nope, you gotta go. Shameful. This is a PR nightmare. I could go deeper, but I don't have time to hunt down these now deleted posts. And I don't want another hour long video. When Yellow Flash and the gang caught one of this fest from Lunar Archivist, G4 nuked the whole page. Now this shocks me. And Fork deleted her account. Good move. You see, you can't get called out if there's nothing to call out. Now, do you remember Homeboy during Fork's heroic speech that ranks up there with some of the greatest speeches in human history? It's right before Winston Churchill's World War II speech. That's just how powerful this three minute speech was, how much it changed the gaming sphere and got people talking about the obvious sexism. The black dude who was next to Fort, you know, doing the sort of token things, he's the black Hokage. You might've heard the name before, but you can't really remember him. You know, his star on YouTube has really waned in recent years. Well, RK Outpost and Geeks and Gamers as <laughs> I've exposed him for his hypocrisy. It's been expected that you can talk about how much you jerked off to women as a compliment. That's it's weird. not a compliment. It's weird. Added a hot tub, like a hot tub streamer category. Uh-huh. How do you think about that? I mean, cool. It's separated like by category right now, so it's easier to find. I'll be watching naked. Are we on the same website? Yeah, no. Well, what does the website have to do with me watching oh, naked? Oh, you were watching naked. Yeah, I'll be watching naked with nothing but my Tim's on. I Sassy, anyone? It's dehumanizing and it's weird. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Hey, she cooking, y'all. May God strike me down. Every woman that I've ever told me they don't swallow. And every woman that sucked my swallowed. Thoughts. They be lying, bro. They be lying. Because you know what? You, you know what? You tell them. You tell them, be like, nah, I like swallow. What? Hey, hey. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta drop you up. Son, why do all white lesbians look like Barney Rubble from the Flintstones? That is the real thing.
thing, snatched. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I don't care he said it. I just found it funny that like, he is gonna sit there and he acts like he's on this moral high road and you're doing something similar at times there, my dude. You see, you gotta be honest with people up front. I'm a piece of shit. At some point, you're probably gonna dislike me. I'll probably say something that'll offend you, make you mad. Cause that's how everybody is. Everybody loves you till you turn on something they they like. It's like, whoa, I used to think you're a cool till you cross this invisible line. That's why I'm letting you know now it's coming. And when it does, you can sit there and go, well, he told me. <laughs> the next day, Fork took to Twitter. She was taking the fight to the bad faith actors and YouTube drama farmers. She was like Miss Marvel, I tell you. She swooped right in and she kicked toxic masculinity right in the balls. By using toxic femininity, what a sexually dubious Chad move. Did you know that she calls herself the female Brad Pitt? Or the Brad Pitt of lesbians or something like that? To all these drama farming YouTubers, you can always reach out to my agent if you'd like to schedule a discussion. What a hero. They won't do it fork of course not but the avenue is there and i'll gladly do it pro bono look at her throwing youtubers a bone because she's so important i'm sure normally you'd have to pay a small fortune to have great interviews with fork such as this fantastic video that she did with uh this nba chick that only has 4k views because everybody's making fun of her so before that, it probably had like 1,000 to 2,000 views. This video makes no sense. Like, who was this for? Because nobody gave <laughs> about it. But whatever. Why even give them the time? They're just, they'll just take snippets of discussion and try and twist it negatively. Speak the truth and let them swallow that instead. Oh, my God. How do you feel about Mr. Garfield? Yes, but I love playing bitches, and I was a bitch in that. <laughs> There's a lot of bitch in every woman and a lot of bitch in every man, too. Because I like to see them say the things they do to my face and how they deal with an actual discussion and response. Because she's such a great arbiter. I saw her in d and I was floored. I was deeply moved. I wept as her character did something. Fork was strutting her stuff on Twitter like Tom Jones during 1965 concert era with an echo chamber that reaffirmed her beliefs. But there was one flaw in this plan. Many YouTubers were willing to talk to her. Now, I don't have the pictures of this anymore because uh, she deleted her Twitter like two days later. <gasps> but from what I remember seeing, Nerd Roddick was there, Geeks and Gamers, uh, the quartering, God, there's just so many people in the comments looking for it to happen. Then Fork put out a fake email for people to contact her agent. Ironically, the trolls found her agent's real email and hilarity ensued. See, what I don't understand about all this is, it seems like she keeps throwing gasoline on the fire whenever it starts to dim. Geeks and Gamers talked about the tweets right before she deleted them on Tuesday night's main event. I forgot the name, but can't even remember my own birthday, so don't take it personal, GG. Now, as I said before, Fork just out of nowhere wiped her entire Twitter clean, which took everybody by surprise. Like, you know, she's sitting there, she's challenging people to debate her and whatnot, and she was only going to go on the biggest YouTubers channels because it's about PR more than anything else. Although I should have just tweeted whoops, that would have been much funnier. Cleaned out socials and got several messages asking if I was hacked. All is well, I just... I just had it for close to forever and decided on a spring cleaning poop jokes returning. Now, that to me is just like her Reddit account, where it was full of incriminating shit that showed her inability to grow as a person, take any level of constructive criticism, and function like, you know, normally. Like, whenever anyone said anything that wasn't praise on that G4 Reddit, she just went back at the person like they were some sort of troll or scumbag or tell them they are talking from a place of privilege or alt-right this, feminism that. And it was just like, and if you've seen Fork's tweets before, they came off bad. Who tells half the country to go f*** themselves? <laughs> you know, it's like, 
If you're a Trump supporter, I don't want you as a fan. That's not the move to make. Do you see my point? So it makes total sense to delete her whole Twitter timeline. Fork just hid her incriminating evidence. She was better at it than Hunter Biden stuffing drugs up his ass at the airport. This requires a revision because things just keep changing. Nothing is static. The quartering and veto were going to get interviews with Fork. But then all hell sort of broke loose. The commentary community had a slight civil war that lasted literally six hours, maybe seven. Who the hell knows? I cannot believe this. Yellow Flash and the quartering had a spat live on the air. You can find it on Yellow Flash's live stream secondary channel that I can't remember the name of, but it was pretty funny. The quartering rolled in drunk and everybody was just at each other's throats. It was like a verbal knife fight. It was entertainment unchained. The way I like it. My favorite quartering is a drunk quartering. Anyway, they made up literally the next day. But weirdly enough, it doesn't seem like the fork interviews are happening. I am in shock! I have a source that has told me Vito's confirmed he's not getting an interview. I don't know. It seems like the quartering is on the fence about it now. And it may just be over entirely. Not 100% sure. It's pretty much the gravy train for this is over. And I'm wasting my time, life, and energies. I should go hang myself. There's no point to this video anymore. Let's end it on some high notes, Stu. As we wind down, let's talk about GeForce D&D show again. They brought on Freddie Prince Jr., a guy that gamers love. Last time I saw something from Freddie Prince Jr., he was getting ratioed by Az over the Gina Carlo drama. Could you imagine that? You go from kissing Buffy the Vampire Slayer because I don't know the chick's real name. You go from that, you go from TRL, you walk out in an audience of girls cheer for you like you're the greatest thing to ever happen. And now you're an old man with gray hair, a dying YouTube channel and an even deader career. And you're getting completely and utterly beaten to a bloody pulp on Twitter by ads. It's got to be a real come down. They had Freddie Prince Jr. on right after all this drama to get our minds off of it. Here's some Freddie Prince Jr. kids. Because that's what we want. People who are G4 fans. We want an aging Freddie Pence Jr. Because we all remember the movie She's All That. Am I right? Now, anyway, he rolls in with a cape that's so gay it would make Richard Simmons uncomfortable. But all jokes aside, G4 is really leaning towards the hyper-progressive left crowd. They even had Patton Oswalt on. Now, you might remember Patton Oswalt from being utterly obnoxious on Twitter. And he's best known for recently taking a photo of Dave Chappelle and then literally canceling himself the next day and writing an apology letter to his fans in the trans community for taking a picture with a friend he's had for years and smiling. God forbid. Shame on you, Pat Oswalt. Shame for smiling with your friend who said some things we didn't like. You know, we're living in a society. You obviously are guilty by association. Pat Oswalt had to beat his own feet later that night and film it for the LGBTQ community. To end it all on a funny note. It is at 55810. Let me tell you. Do you want to promote laminated it? Amazingly stretch goal? You want to promote it? We amazingly still have seventeen hundred people. It would be at probably seventy thousand if she would take my advice and show a little pink. No. Well, you know, I can't argue with Cecil here. He's making a lot of sense. <laughs> no. <laughs> how about not? I remember this is how like people like keep shipping me and that Star Wars girl as some sort they of do. secret couple, and I, if she does me. anything. There was one stream where I guess her ass came out of her skirt or something. Oh, my and God. Everyone <laughs> sent it to me as if it was the most important thing that ever happened. 